Hello and welcome to the tutorial for Aquaman and the, forget all that. So Amber Hearsay gets to be in the movie. Hmm. So it's like sending two people to detention and one of them gets their football scholarship taken away, but the cheerleader gets a cheerlead. All right, run my music. Again, um, so today we're gonna be talking about Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. So we're gonna go right into the review. So we're gonna do, I like to do a plot review and then we have to do an overall review. There's gonna be spoilers. So I don't know why you would join this if you didn't wanna get spoiled. But um, according to the numbers, you're not even gonna watch it anyways. Anyway, so first things first. So Aquaman and Mira, Aquaman and Mira are married and there's like a baby montage at the beginning of the movie. Cause I was like, when I saw the trailer, I was like, Whose baby is this? Because from what I heard, don't cancel me for that. Um, cancel her. But from what I heard, I thought that the baby was, I, I, I heard that the baby was just going to be like, he, he, he made the baby himself. But there was a montage or whatever. I guess it was cute. Anyway, so they're married, had a baby in the sea. Um, the global warming epidemic, the cancel no likey. And then I have Manta, Revenge Against His Dad, who did bad things and got bad things happen to his dad. Like, I'm sorry, but like your dad was like a whole villain and like, we're supposed to feel bad for you. Um, Orm, Arm, um, he looking good. <laughs> I mean, for 50 years old. I know he did like Ocean Master, you know, his name's pretty um, whatever, but like he, he he looking good for 50. Okay, he's looking good for 50. Don't, don't come for me for that. Um, but yeah, that's the overall review is that they got to basically, um, the council doesn't like the idea of revealing themselves to the world. Um, uh, uh, another thing with the voices again, um, it's kind of similar to when I was watching, that was Marvelous DC. Um, when I was watching the movie, like there was a lot of loose talking. Orm, you got to get to the end of the room. Like everybody's talking so loose. I don't know how else to describe it, but there wasn't succinct. There wasn't crispness in the some of the audio. Um, a lot of dark scenes. DC stands for dark comics, apparently. I was like, I can't see. Some of the scenes, I was just like, I don't know what I'm looking at. Like there was like, we needed some a lighting check or whatever, but um, that's pretty much the plan. Like he needs someone to help him because uh, Manta found... He looking good too. Everybody's just in shape. Um, I see what they said. They said, we are going to sell this movie by any means possible. We're going to find the finest men we can. And they was right. We did watch it for them because the plot makes no sense because he finds some mystical Titan. He found some, he finds a mystical Triton and then he finds a mystical Triton and then he, you know, you know, uh, Randall Park amazing actor i loved him on super not superstore um the blockbuster but like in any other movie dc marvel he's in he's on all the comic books anyways but um so they find this thing at the bottom of the ocean and of course you know instead of being like oh my god leave well enough alone and like all he had to do honestly all manta had to do was go to therapy like i feel like this could have been solved with a therapy session like so how did your dad being you know um delighted because he caused it how did it make you feel? And then we could have just had a nice little movie, you know, just watching Jason Momoa, Jason Momoa for an hour and a half and we would have enjoyed it. But no, now we have to be dragged along with you because you didn't want to go to therapy. You didn't want to do the shadow work. So now we got to follow him. And so I guess the Titan, of course, the Titan's like, the, I mean, the Titan, the Triton is cursed, of course. And now the Triton's cursed. So now it's like slowly taking over him. He's got these green, green lantern eyes. God, like I mean, maybe he's trying to soft launch himself to be the new GL for um DC whenever they make that movie. But um, anyways, but like maybe I don't, I don't know what's going on with that. But yeah, so like he basically goes around. He's starting to heat up the world because they froze him and ice froze the bad guy in time, and he's so forgettable. Baby, what is the villain's name? <laughs> we don't know. All I know is he looked like an evil Groot. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like an evil Groot. Like, I don't even know how to describe him, but he looks like an evil Groot. I was like, what are we even talking about? Like, if he would have, if he would have stood up and said, I am Groot. Like, you know, if he would have said that, I, I promise you, I would have kikied in the theater because I felt like I was the only person who was laughing in the theater. Like, no one was finding none of the jokes funny. Like, it was just a lot. 
they had this crab that lost an arm and I was like, it was me. I love crab legs. So if y'all ever want to send me something in the mail. <laughs> He said, for some reason, I'm missing a crab leg again. I was like, it was me. Lemon butter sauce. I love crab legs. Anyways, focus, focus, focus. So that's the plot. And I'm just like, okay, like, baby, what you want us to do with this? Like, the plot, like, and he's got to go around the world to the lost kingdom, lost kingdom and find things and whatever. I'm just like, what is happening right now? I, I, I don't know. Like, the plot's not interesting enough, but Jason Momoa... He does his Jason Momoa thing, convinces us to watch it. But that's overall plot. Uh, Manta Ray is heating up the world with evil Groot. And then you have, he's heating up the world with evil Groot. And then you have Jason Momoa and his brother are going on a bromance, literal brothers <laughs> bromance, like trying to build the relationship back, which I just don't understand. A lot of relationships were accelerated. I didn't know, I didn't know him and Mira even liked each other like that, to have a whole kid, get married. Him and Orm, like they just forgot that they were like, against each other anyways overall review okay overall review one out of five now stay with me now you know i'm a dc girly i love wonder woman she's on my background on everything um i love i the of dc comics over marvel i feel like dc has a little bit more i don't know variety the more women empowerment in dc i feel like marvel a lot of the girls kind of just they're just kind of there um but i've always loved dc so i I'm gonna stick beside him. Okay. But one out of five. Um, too long of a difference for um I feel like it was too long of a difference for between when it was filmed and when it was released. Um, I know there was a writer's skill strike, you know, Bokid 19 also um also slowed some of the filming and production down. Um, but five years once again, kind of like with the Marvels. Baby, five we old. Like the people who watch your movie is millennials. Baby, we old. Rewind and remind us what happened last time. We don't know. Five years? That's a long time to sit there and be like, oh, okay. Let's tell you what happened. We don't know, baby. We 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 done forgot. We don't know what the plot is. Um, the baby showing up was wild. Like they didn't have to make the hot baby, but whatever. Um, there's such thing as superhero fatigue. So superhero fatigue is a phenomenon. It's just started. Um Superhero fatigue is that we're releasing too many DC, we're releasing too many um, nerdy stuff at once. Give us a break. Give us a regular, boring, no offense, historical, Oppenheimer, whatever movie. Give us more of those to balance out because it's like every month there's a different movie. Like Marvel's got released in November. Um, Marvel's got released in November, and then um, Marvel's got released in November. This one got released in December. I believe there's another comic book being released in January. I think Madam Web is February. Like, there's a lot of comic book fatigue, superhero fatigue, where it's just like back in the day, like you know, like back in the day, like it was rare for you to see a superhero movie. So when you saw it, it was like a um, you know, I'm just trying to say, like it was an anomaly, like it was something that it was something different. Now it's just like. Are you going to see the superhero movie? They're going to be like, which one? So, like, they're like, you don't want it to be where people are fatigued. Like I said, it's our nerdy, you know, us nerds. Like, we grew up on it. So, um, we want more movies back to back, but that's on the cost for everybody. Everybody is getting superhero fatigue, and I'll talk about the numbers later. Um, DC Flash Fail was also this year. This is a long, 2023 was a long year. Um, the DC Flash Fail, I feel like. The DCFF, pretty much. The DC Flash fail, as you guys know, with um, Azumira Miller, allegedly. You ain't gonna get me. Um, but allegedly, um, with all the stuff that happened with Ezra Miller, like, that also overshadowed a lot of the um, the Flash premiere. Like I said, I was actually watching the Flashpoint. I was gonna do a review on it, but it was too... It was too late. I think I watched it like months later because I didn't know that it came out. <laughs> um, but yeah, definitely for sure... Uh, watching watching it fail like this right after like the flash thing was pretty disheartening because it's just like it's crazy how like one person in the classroom is literally spoiling the whole bunch like it's literally spoiling the whole thing so um i think that was definitely to its own detriment that there wasn't a minute there was no way you're gonna get over that they were gonna get past whatever controversy that happened. Like they were gonna be able to get past it to be able to sell tickets, to get people in the chair. So definitely superhero fatigue as well. But DC itself, like DC has not been winning lately, baby. Like the Batman movie was trash. The, you know, the Batman movie was trash. And then 
and the flash when we was trash and then like just from the numbers which i'll tell you in a moment the numbers as well was actually not good as well for um dc um jason momoa wrote the story i noticed that too in the ending credits it looks like this, this story says story by jason momoa which like i said i had a lot of um because of inflation in conclusion more people more, the actors are starting to get more involved in the process of the movie making process because the money is not where it's at so let's let's let me break it down to you real quick okay i don't want this video to be too long um so let's say you're an actress and you're getting paid a million dollars for a movie which is unheard of now by the way unless you've already been here let's say you're getting paid a million dollars so a million dollars half of that stuff go to go to uncle sam another half goes to your production team so you might give him that million dollars you might take home 800k maybe sorry eighty thousand of that maybe right so if you're just now starting right but now if you're the writer now you get the writer credit so now you get that residual right so if you're a producer in the movie now you get that residual if you'll notice this too let's know so trend is that a lot of these actors are starting to become like a producer executive producer or director on the movie because maybe they need the money of course they're talented as well but it's genius to do that because it's basically the more you can the more <laughs> written by produced by edited by i mean look at me like i'm a one woman show like the i have like seven ring lights on me <laughs> okay melanin you gotta make sure the melanin is for, um corrected plus uh reflectors on, i have two reflectors under my chin but like this would be something that i would hire somebody to do they would do the lighting whatever editing the editing team's me the production's me on uh, the producing's me so like I get all the credit, so like I feel like you know Jason Momoa. This is like this. I add this to my review as well. Like it's genius to be a writer, but unfortunately, and I love me some Jason Momoa for um, personality reasons, of course. But um, <laughs> I don't know if story writing is his forte because like the story writing didn't make any sense. Like it was cute if this was like a hangover movie but this is a dc movie like a lot of us fans like we've read the comics we've done the research so to sit there and see this movie is it felt very much buddy role buddy bromance type vibes you know so that makes sense but i still feel like just from that perspective i feel like he did a good job i don't know if this is his first time writing a movie but for a movie of this scale i wouldn't have hired him as a writer because i can tell like it was something that jason momoa would do um, also, I have on the review Jason Momoa. He's looking good, um, respectfully. But I just, he's looking good, and I feel like he really brought the role. Like, we, like, he made us forget what we heard, okay? Um, so I like the fact that, like, his personality was there, like, his jokes, like, his chemistry with everyone. Like, he had, he even had chemistry with the water. Jason Momoa has chemistry with everyone. Him and the baby, I was like, is that his son? Oh, wait, his kid's grown. Never mind, never mind. Like, I thought it was his son. Like, he has chemistry with everyone. Like, he really did his thing. Um, let's address the elephant in the room. But, um, when there was a point in the movie where, uh, Mira, sorry. Um, there was a point in the movie where Mira basically she was injured and I thought they were gonna use that as a cop-out so we don't gotta see her anymore right no she comes ex machina in the movie to basically come last minute to save the day and I was just like y'all couldn't kept her in that little hospital bed I don't know <laughs> y'all gotta kept her in a little hospital bed because I really thought she was just gonna be in the beginning we had a baby and then she just goes off and that's mostly like an arm and um Arthur Curry um you know show but like she was like she had made she had major speaking roles i'm not saying i counted all 40 words she said but i was very disappointed in the fact that like you know me i'm a big harry potter nerd and you know, a big griffy um and for me to see him kicked out of grindelwald but little mama is in the movie as a full role this brings me to the point of now i see why now i see why they didn't have a red carpet because it was gonna be kind of hard to have a red carpet premiere and she wasn't there. She's she's one of the main people. She's one of the main people. Like she's one of the main people. So I feel like they they did a cop out. They still had him. I saw the videos on TikTok, which is genius. Um, they had him basically do photo ops with um, people with him in the Triton. So that's smart. But there wasn't a red carpet premiere. And fun fact, they did not have a red carpet premiere because there was too much controversy. So they thought maybe they could just release the video. But the red carpet premiere is where the money's at. Because right now. Like we just dropped this is the account this is the account about to start speaking. We just dropped two hundred million dollars to produce and animate this movie, and 
Y'all only put y'all only made 145 million in the first week. That's nothing. That's nothing. As soon it's kind of like a YouTube video. The moment you drop that movie, you gotta work overtime to keep that momentum because it's very hard for something to be um, flat like that and increase money. There's no way you're gonna be able to increase revenue if when you started off you wasn't going anywhere. So I personally, I hope they start picking up the pace with the money. Like I said, like I'll do my review. I'll drop my review to like maybe bring the conversation back. But like I said, at the end of the day, like they should have just had her not be in the movie. But don't forget to subscribe, share. It's Claire here. <laughs>